the motor neurons are the guys that are going actually to the muscle fiber. So here's my muscle fiber that's been teased apart. Here's the actual alpha motor neuron. Here's a spindle with a gamma motor neuron. So we have two kinds of motor neurons, alphas and gammas. Okay? Um, they go, alphas go to extrafusally. These are the ones that you can test. Once they enter a muscle, they branch multiple times. God bless you, Thomas. And that is what creates a motor unit. A motor unit is the nerve and all the muscle fibers that it innervates. So little motor units are in things like fine manipulative muscles of our hand and our eyelids and stuff like that. Large motor units are like in our erector spinae and things like that. Gamma motor neurons are only half as numerous as the alpha motor neurons. But if you think about, we've got a lot of alpha motor neurons. That's a lot of gamma motor neurons. These are going to transmit through gamma fibers. They're a little bit smaller. And these go to the spindles. These go to the spindle. These are the guys we're influencing a lot of times when we're sticking a needle in. We're changing spindle gain when we insert a needle into a muscle. These are one-third of the peripheral nerve going to the muscle. One-third. That's a lot. Okay. They're activated along with alpha and alpha motor neurons. So when I activate an alpha, I have to activate the gamma to kind of change the muscle gain. As a muscle shortens, I need to make that spindle shorter. So that way, the muscle knows that it can contract appropriately. Otherwise, it won't. We get spasm when there's an, a difference or a disparity between alpha and gamma gain. When the two are going, one is going on, and one is either turned up too high or too low. So think of, al uh, think of gamma motor neurons as the volume control in a muscle. The more it's turned up, the more sensitive that muscle is to stress. You know what I'm talking about. You have the person that comes in, you're checking their reflexes, right? And it's like, bam, and they're all over the place. And you're like, oh my god, this guy's got an upper motor neuron lesion, you know? But maybe not. Maybe their motor neuronal pool is just more facilitated. Maybe they're hyperventilating and their CO2 levels are up. There could be a lot of reasons that it's increased. And there's other people, you could hit them with a sledgehammer, right? And the, there's just nothing happening there. Their pool is down. We think of this as the volume control. Normal individual you've seen before, right, had good reflexes. Now they've either gotten worse or better. We've altered the alpha-gamma ratio. We've altered the yin and the yang. Could we use those in the same sentence? Alpha and gamma motor neurons, yin and... Of course we can. Okay, this is the 20th century here. Okay, these guys, the gamma motor neurons, are excited by the brainstem. Okay? The bulbo reticulatory form. Okay, there's a rostral and a caudal portion, right? But really, all we need to know is that it's the brainstem that's driving those guys. And it gets its information, guess where? The cerebellum. Tells it what to do. So if I don't give the cerebellum information, which means if I don't activate muscle mechanoreceptors, I don't activate joint mechanoreceptors, then these guys' tone gets messed up. And we see that all the time. Okay? And we can not only check tone like, do they have tone, or checking the reflex. You can just grab somebody's arm, and I'm going back and forth. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm calculating and seeing what's their resistance to stretch at this area. Okay? Some of these people are like, and you got to really like move them, right? And that means that their, their, um, their gamma gain is up somewhat. And some people are super duper sloppy, right? And then that means that their gamma gain is probably down. The cool thing and the take home message here is we influence this with acupuncture needles. This is what we do all the time. We don't really have to understand all this stuff to know that it works, but it's nice to know that there's a reason that it works. At least I like to think so. So here's the spinal cord. Okay, We have alpha motor neurons going to extrafusal fibers. Gamma motor neurons going to intrafusal fibers. And these are things like annulospiral endings and flower spray endings. All things you remember from college but promptly forgot after the final. Okay. These guys are activated together from the brain. This guy from the reticular formation, this guy from the cortex. Two different areas of the brain that communicate, because the brain's just a bunch of feedback loops and inner neurons, okay? but they communicate importantly. And when I see a mix-up between the two, I see a change in gain. So this diagram here, shows what happens if I don't have gamma gain. Okay? So this is a normal muscle, right? And I'm, what I'm going to do is start to contract it. So I contract the muscle. <clears throat> if I don't activate the gamma motor neuron, the spindle gets flaccid. So I don't have that feedback going back to my brain telling me about what that muscle tone is like right now. And then I may misjudge. I may contract it too much or not enough. Okay? When it does contract, the intrafusal fibers or the gamma um, fibers, when we have coactivation, contract along with it and keep it nice and even. So, you see abnormal muscle tone? There's an imbalance between yin and yang, an imbalance between alpha and gamma gain. 